hello everybody. Today we're going to take some time and we're going to look at some geometry. And let's start with our first question. All right, so question we have here, number 14, five answer choices. And it asks us for an office building with the following dimensions in feet. We have the figure below and they want the area in square feet of the building. We have two ways to do the problem. First way we can do the problem is if we know the shape of the office building by looking at it. If we're aware this is a trapezoid. And if we know what the area of a trapezoid is, we could use the formula for area of a trapezoid. Area is equal to one half base one plus base two, so we're averaging the top and the bottom base, multiplied by the height. So in our case, that would give us an area of one half, 800 plus 1200. Hang on, a little mistake there, let's clean up that. Let's, I wanna put a one in front of that too. We have 800 plus 1200 times the height 1100. 800 plus 1200 is 2000, half of 2000 is 1000. Area is 1000 times 1100. That means our area is gonna be 1,100,000, which is gonna give us answer J. Now, I wanna take a minute or two guys because a lot of us may not know what the formula of a trapezoid is, <laughs> right? And that's okay. If you don't know the formula for the trapezoid, you can still get this problem done. So let's take a second and look at, all right, if I'm not sure what the area of a trapezoid is, what am I going to do, right? So if I'm not sure the area of a trapezoid or don't even realize it's a trapezoid, what I do know is I have a rectangle and two triangles. So I'm like, well, hang on. If this is a rectangle, opposite sides in a rectangle are equal. So if that's 1100, that's 1100. If the top is 800, then the bottom is 800. If the total length is 1200, and these are even sides, then I'm gonna to have to take that extra 400 and divide it up evenly between the two triangles. So that means I'm gonna have 200 here and 200 here. So the second way to find the area of this problem is to break it up into a rectangle and two triangles, all right? And we know how to find the area of a rectangle and we know how to find the area of a triangle. So that means the area is gonna be, the area of the rectangle is gonna be base times height. So that's gonna be 800 times 1100. Right, so the area of the rectangle is 880,000. Right, then we've got two triangles. Well, an area of one of the triangles is one half base times height. That's gonna be one half the base of 200 times the height of 1100. Half of 200 is 100, 100 times 1100 is 110,000. So now since we have one rectangle and two triangles, we're gonna take the 880,000 from the rectangle, and then we're gonna add 110 for each of the two triangles. And we still get 1,100,000 for the area of the picture. 
So the message that I want to be real clear about delivering with this picture is that even if you don't know something like a trapezoid or his area formula, there's other ways to get the answer. And one of the biggest ways in geometry is we start breaking our figures up into things we know. And things we know tend to be rectangles and triangles. <laughs> So if I can go ahead and take what you've given me and turn it into a rectangle and two triangles, I'm perfectly happy at working the math from that point. Okay. okay. So don't get too crazy if you're in a test and you see something like, oh my God, I can't remember what the formula is for a trapezoid. <laughs> right? It's okay. There's another way around the problem. It's one of the beauty of SAT and ACT problems is there's always at least two or three different ways to solve them. And you just want to find the way that occurs to you fastest, most efficiently, and allows you to get it right. Okay, so let's move on to another question. All right, so we have a 51. All right, these are ACT answers. If you remember in the ACT test, the math goes from 1 to 60. 51 is going to be one of the harder problems. So let's figure out what we have here. Let's figure out what we're going to do with it. Let's figure out how we can work this answer. So they tell us we have a regular hexagon inscribed in a circle with a circumference of 6 pi and they want to know what the perimeter of the hexagon is. In geometry, when you don't give me a figure, one of the first things I really want to do is draw myself a nice figure. So I'm going to draw myself a circle. All right, got a circle. Then we'll go ahead. Pythagorean theorem? Sure, Alex. Where would you, in the prior problem or in this problem? You mean, Alex, I'm going to go back. You mean here with the triangles? Right. Are you talking about finding the hypotenuse here with the triangle in question 14? All right, just want to be real careful here. Notice in both of my math calculations, I never use the hypotenuse. All right, this hypotenuse, it's a hypotenuse. We have a right triangle. Pythagorean theorem will find the hypotenuse for me. But the hypotenuse does not help me find the area. Area is always base times height which in a right triangle is always the legs. So absolutely with a right triangle, Pythagorean theorem is appropriate, but we don't need the hypotenuse here to find area. In a, high, in a triangle, area is always the legs. Does that answer the question that you ask, Alex? Is that what you're asking about? All right. Feel free to, to post it and, and I can always come back to it. So we got plenty of time. All right, so I start on this question with a circle. Now I'm going to kind of freehand a hexagon. I do want to point out a couple of keywords here. I have a regular hexagon. Regular is an important word. Regular means all the sides are equal and all the angles are equal. So that's kind of an important thing to know. So I'm like, okay, if I'm going to put a hexagon inside a circle, a hexagon has six sides. Let's go ahead, draw ourselves a hexagon. So one side, two side, three side, four side, five side, six side. Everybody forgive me for my kind of rough hexagon. All right, but that's okay. Yes, they do. All ACT questions have five answer choices. 
and in the on the ACT, the answer choices are either A, B, C, D, E, like they are here in 51, or let me back up a slide. They're F, G, H, J, K, as they are in 14. They flip flop because one of the reasons they do that is to help you so that you don't kind of get off by a, a row or anything. Right in ACT. Preston, no formulas are given. So SAT gives formulas. So Kathy, most of the geometry formulas are given on the SAT. In the ACT, they generally give you no formulas. For the ACT, you have to have your formulas memorized. All right? So you pretty much get no formulas from the ACT. So that's one of the differences between the two. Right, and one of the distinctions with the SAT is they do give you geometry formulas, areas, volumes, um, your 30, 60, 90 right triangle relationship, your 45, 45 right triangle relationship, your Pythagorean theorem. But if you guys have noticed since 2015, AC, um, SAT has cut out a whole lot of the geometry. So they're happy to give us geometry formulas because they don't ask us a lot of geometry questions. All right, kind of annoying if you ask me. All right, so here for the ACT, Preston, I would not have circular formulas. I would have to know that since you told me the circumference is six pi, I would have to say, oh, okay, circumference is equal to either pi times diameter or two pi times my radius. And if that's equal to six pi, then I know my radius has to be three. And if I know my radius is three, I can come in here and draw myself some radii. And I know that all of those radii are length three. So I'm like, well, hang on a second. I've kind of done a little bit of dividing things up again. I have six of these triangles inside a hexagon. Hmm, it would be really nice to know how many degrees are kind of in these angles. So I'm like, well, hang on a second. If I got six triangles, right? Six times 180, One, two, three, six times eight. Hang on a second. All right, I want to use a different formula because I want to make I want to review a formula. If I'm trying to figure out how many degrees are in a hexagon, all right? One of the things I can do, I told you guys, we can divide things up. So one way to do that, let's take a different color line here. I could say, well, hang on. I got a triangle, a rectangle, and a triangle with my hex. So I know that I have 360 degrees in a rectangle. I know I have 180 in each of my triangles. Eight and eight, 16 and six is 12. Here are the one 720 degrees in that hexagon. Since it's regular, the 720 degrees divided by the six angles. Absolutely can use POE, John. All right, so I got 120 degrees in each of my, and that's the whole angle here. All right, and John, it's a really good question because I, I wanna come back later and talk about answer E. This answer E is a bit of a trap answer, and my recommendation is basically be really careful with those kind of answers. Well, now, if I know that I've got these triangles hanging out in here, every one of these triangles, all right, if I were to find the area of the triangle, that'd be a height. I know that that's three and that's three because that's a radius. That height's gonna make a right angle. If that's 120 in the full angle, then this guy is gonna be 60. All right, that's 60 at the top, so that's 30 on each side because I got right triangles. That means that this side is 1.5 and 1.5. It's also three. 
every one of these triangles inside that hexagon are equilateral triangles. Once I know that, and I know this length, perimeters, I have six of these. Six times three is 18 for the perimeter of the hexagon. All right, so that's why we love when you tell me I have a regular figure of some sort. All right, regular is a good piece of info for us. Now, John, I want to come back to that POE because that's a really important concept. All right, notice how answer E says insufficient information to answer the question. Also, in sort of, if we reinterpret that, we could say none of the above. All right, nothing here works. This answer in a math question is usually not correct for the SAT or the ACT. This is usually an answer for folks that are like, I really don't know how to do this question. Let's hope you can't do the question. All right, so be really, really careful of these insufficient, none of the above, can't answer. Because most of the time on the SAT and the ACT, there are answers valid. All right, so I tend to want to stay away from these kind of answers. All right. All right, guys. So that's our hexagon question. Let's move on. And let's take a look at... a pyramid-shaped container. Let's see what I got. Let's make sure I understand what you're asking me. You told me a gallon is 231 cubic inches, okay? Which of the following is closest to the area of the base? Okay, area of the base would be the area of this square or rectangle down here on the bottom, all right? That's the base. Let's go ahead and label that guy. All right, this is my base. All right, this 15 is our height. And they've told us for this question that we have a... Any, we did do three times six. Okay, let's go back, all right? 720, let me, I want to draw that again down on the bottom. Kyla, yes, figures are drawn a scale as long as it doesn't say not drawn a scale. Be careful, guys. We don't know what the length of this is. This is not a radius. We have to convince ourselves that we know that this is an equilateral triangle before we do the six times three. Any, does that make sense? All right. I know my radii are all three, but I'm not sure about that base. All right, let's go back. I want to draw a hexagon a little cleaner for you. All right, hexagon. Let me show you how to get the 720. All right, if I have a hexagon, six figures. All right, let's change colors. I'm going to go ahead, draw a line there. I have a triangle on the left. I'm going to draw a line here. I have a rectangle in the middle and I have another triangle on the right. So what I did, Mustafa, to get to 720 is I said, well, I know that a rectangle has 360 degrees in it. I know that a triangle has 180 degrees in it and we have two 180 degree triangles. So we have 720 degrees in that hexagon. Now, there's a formula you guys may remember, or may not, n minus 2, right, n minus 2 times 180. That's another way to figure out how many degrees I have in my figure. In our case, n is 6 because we have a hexagon, so 6 minus 2 times 180, or 4 times 180, is also 720. So once again, there's more than one way to get to the answer choice. I can break it up, 
or if I remember my formula, I can do n minus 2 times 180. Mustafa, does that help you? You okay with that? And Annie, be really careful here. I had to make sure I knew this was an equilateral triangle because I know that the radius is three, but I don't know what this outside length is until I've convinced myself. That's why I had to go get the degrees in the hexagon. Oh, if I have 120 degrees in this whole angle, the radius is going to bisect it. That's going to put 60 here. That's going to put 60 there. That's going to put 60 there. That is going to be an equilateral triangle. Then it is exactly 6 times 3, which my perimeter is 18. Let's go ahead, circle 18, so we don't forget what the answer is. All right. So in the end, we did do the 6 times 3 any, but we have to make sure we know, OK, am I convinced I know why that side has to be 3? And in this case, I had to convince myself I knew that I had equilateral triangles. OK, and if you can get there really quickly, go for it. All right, all good. All right, and Kyla, as long as the figure says, as long as the figure does not say figure not drawn to scale, it pretty much is drawn to scale. All right, so we want to make sure not to estimate on anything where it says figure not drawn to scale. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at finishing off this question. Let's see what we got here with 41. All right, we've got a height of 15. And you said the volume here was 2 gallons. Okay, if a gallon is 231 cubic inches, I'm going to take 231 and multiply it by two, because we have two gallons, two, six, 462 cubic inches. Okay. They gave us the volume formula. So volume of a period, of a pyramid, sorry, not a period, volume is one third, the area of the base times the height. So be real careful. This B here is not a linear dimension, it's an area. That B is area of the base. Just like they said here, base area B. Okay, I've got a formula, I've got some numbers, let's sort it out. My volume is 462 cubic inches. That's equal to one third the area of the base and our height was 15. That's in inches. I got inches, I got cubic inches. That's great. We're all in the same units. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna simplify the right side of the equation. I can do one third of 15. All right, one third of 15 is five. So 462 is equal to five times the area of the base. That means the area of my base is going to be 462 divided by 5. Now, at this point, I can do a little estimating. 462 divided by 5 is going to be an area of a base less than 100. Because if the base area was 100, then this would be 500. So I know that 5 is going in 462 for a number less than 100. And if I look at my answer choices, there's only one number over here that's less than 100. So I'm pretty sure that A has to be the answer to this question. If I take out my calculator and double check, the area of the base, 5 goes into 46 9 times. One left over, 5 goes into 12 2. And two fifths, absolutely. Slightly bigger than 92. We'll take the 92. All right, and they said closest, so we knew we were generally estimating. But that's one of the ways when we see a bunch of numbers, we're like, hang on, five times this is less than 500. B is going to have to be less than 100. Great, there's only one answer less than 100. I don't even have to actually finish this. Because one of the important things on these tests 
is to be really efficient. I've got so many questions I have to get done in a very short time period. So I want to go ahead and try to do the minimum amount of work, get the answer as quickly as I can so I can spend some time on another question. All right, so if I don't have to spend my time dividing five into 462, I'm not going to. Okay, answer's A, great, let's move on and find another problem. All right, do we have any questions from this problem anybody wants to ask? This was kind of a straight sort of got a formula, got some numbers, kind of plug and chug into the formula. All right, we like a good plug and chug question. Can get us in and out of uh, our questions fairly quickly and efficiently. All right? How is this answer closest to the area of the base? All right? Danielle, I'm I'm a little unclear on what exactly you're asking for. We set up the formula, volume is one third base times height. We took the volume, we had a, they told us a gallon was 231 cubic inches. They told us we had two gallons, so we had to turn that into 462. So I have a volume, I have a height, I put in the volumes and the height and I solve for the area of the base. All right. One third of 15 is five. And I said, when you get to this formula right here, five times the area of the base is 462. This is where I said you can estimate. I know that since this answer is less than 500, the base has to be less than 100. If that base is 100 or more, that volume has to be 500 or more. Since this is 462, this base area has to be less than 100. And if you look at your answer choices, there's only one answer that's less than 100. All right, so I know at that point right here that A is going to have to be the area of the base. All right, feel free to Type in a question if I misunderstood the question that you're asking, or you know, feel free to go ahead and ask again. I'm not sure that I answered the exact question you were asking me for. All right. So let's take a look at a new question. All right, they give us, all right, we got question one. All right, this is five answers, so this has to be the ACT. Since ACT is questions one through 60, first 20 are gonna be pretty straightforward. So I'm expecting this to be fairly straightforward, not too complicated, no real twists to it. So you gave me four railroad lines, A, B, C, and D. They A and B and C and D run parallel to each other. Okay, so we're talking parallel lines. A is parallel to B, and C is parallel to D. You tell me that this angle here, where A and C intersect, is 110 degrees. You want to know this angle down here where B and D intersect. So let's start thinking about what we know about angles and parallel lines. Well, at Princeton, we like to work with what we call big, big angles and little angles. Right? So if I give you two parallel lines with a line cutting across them, I'm gonna call this guy the big angle, and I'm gonna call this other guy the little angle. And this is the big angle, All right? All the big angles on that line are equal. So big is equal to big, vertical angles, little is equal to little. 
All right. When we get here and we go to the second line, this is going to be alternate interior or supplemental. So alternate interior, this L is going to be here or supplemental between B and L. So this is L, the little angle again. That's the little angle again. That's the big angle. That's the big angle. All right. Nothing I like than more than simplifying things. I don't have to think about alternate interior angles or vertical angles or supplemental. Are they supplemental? I don't want to be thinking about all that in the middle of my test. I like the big and the little angles because it makes it pretty straightforward for me. So for our sense here, if this angle between A and C is 110, we know that this is 110, this is 70, and this is 70. 110 being my big angle, 70 being my small angle. We go down and we say, okay, alternate interior, all right? So if we take our 110 here, it's the pointer, 110 here, alternate interior means I have to have 110 here and notice that's a big angle versus a small angle. This is 110, this is 70, this is 110, this is 70. All right, let's look at what's going on on the line B with C and D. If this is 110, then this has to be 110. All right, and this is going to be 70. Again, we can also say I've got alternate interiors here. And then these are supplemental. So 70 there, 110 there. Again, big angle 110, small angle 70 there. Small angle 70 there, small angle 70 there, big angle 110. That means this big angle is 110. All right? So the answer for this question is A, 110. And I love the ability to do, oh, is it a big angle or is it a small angle? Oh, that's a big angle, that's a small angle, big angle, small angle, big angle, big angle, small angle, small angle, big angle. Again, it I don't have to sit there thinking about the whole, well, alternate interior, is that vertical? Is that supplemental, right? Is it big or is it little, big or small? You can use big or small instead of big and little. Same thing. All right, so nothing we like than a nice, straightforward simplification that helps me get through a problem really quickly. All right. Now, let's also talk about the answer choices here. Let's also talk about reasonable answer choices. Since these are all on a straight line, all right, all these angles are going to add up to 180 degrees. Are we in agreement? All right, so all these angles are going to add to 180 degrees because they're on a straight line. All right, once you give me one of my pairs being 110, answers C, D, and E don't make a lot of sense to me because I'm dealing with pairs of 70 and 110. 170 is 10 degrees shy of 180. In order to have 170, you better have a 10 degree angle, not a 110 degree angle. And then 210 and 250 are all bigger than an angle on a straight line. None of my angles are bigger than angles on a straight line and I sure also don't see any angles that look like they're a straight line. So initially, the only answer choices that really seem to make sense to me, if I'm going to pick an answer, have to be A or B. Okay, so that's also a way if you're struggling and you can't remember your relationship, like, well, hang on a second, let me think about this. I got to add to 180, I'm on a straight line. C, D, and E really don't make sense. 
And that's our beauty of process of elimination, right? You're like, yeah, no, they don't, they, those CDNE don't make sense best based on what you've given me here. All right, so we love a good process of elimination. <laughs> All right, excellent. Okay. Let's take a look. Noah? Sure, you want to you want to see question number one again? You want to use Yash wants to use the alternate interior angle theorem. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let me put up. I'm going to put up a blank slide. Let me put up a whiteboard here. Okay, so let me draw some lines for us. All right, so let's go ahead. We've got line A, line B, line C, line D. All right, so let's do A. Whoops, wrong. That's not A. All right, this is A, this is B, this is C. And this is D. And they come in and tell us that this is 110 degrees. Okay, Noah? All right. And Yash, I'm going to go ahead this time and not use the big and the small angles, but I'm going to go ahead and use alternate interiors and vertical angles and supplemental angles on the definitions. All right. So if this is 110 degrees, this angle has to be 110 degrees because those are vertical angles. All right, these two angles are the same, they're vertical angles. This angle here has to be 70 because these two angles are supplemental. <laughs> you, you okay, Noah? You got it? All right, all good. Now, Yash, on the alternate interior, absolutely right. Here I've got 110, that makes this 110. Okay, if that's 110, this has to be supplemental, so that has to be 70. All right, alternate interior says that's 70. This angle has to be supplementary, that has to be 110. So absolutely, alternate interior angles, supplemental angles, they're all perfectly valid and work well with the math. Okay, so everybody's good with that one? All right, excellent. All right, just keep asking questions, guys. Happy to answer questions, happy to try something with a different approach to it, just so we can get your questions answered. All right, let's take a look at question number 21. All right, let's see what we got. We got figure below, not quite above. AE equals BE equals BD. So first thing I'm gonna do is start labeling my figure with what you tell me. AE is equal to BE is equal to BD. Okay, so I'm gonna put all those lines are equal to each other. I'm gonna label EBD is 40. Okay, that's 40. Angle C is 45. You want angle A, so I'm going to put an X in over here because that's the angle that we seem to be looking for. All right, great. Let's see what we know. Well, the first thing with all of these equal sides I'm coming in and looking at triangle EBD first. Since EB and BD are equal, this is an isosceles triangle. If the angle up here is 40, and these two angles down here, remember if our sides are equal, then these two angles have to be equal. I have 180 degrees in a triangle. 
I've got 40 taken care of at the top. I know I have 140 degrees left in that triangle. I got two angles. That means they're both going to be 70 degrees. The side, equilateral. But then if we asked to find the area of an equilateral triangle, one half base times height. Well, hang on, I got to drop a height. So we drop a height down here, height. Whoops. I have a hundred height has to be perpendicular to the bottom of the base. All right. I know that this angle is 60. I know this angle is 60. If that's 90, then that's 30, and that's 30. I have one of my special right triangles, right? I've got the 30, 60, 90 relationships. So let's go ahead and draw ourselves a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Right, so when I have that angle there, if this is 30 and this is 60, the relationship in a 30, 60, 90, the side opposite the 30 is X. The side opposite the 60 is X times radical 3. And the side opposite the 90 is 2X. So if we go back to what we have over here, if you tell me the side is S, well, this makes sense because this is S over two down here and S over two down there. That means my height has to be S over two times radical three. All right? The tests love to put in finding areas of equilateral triangles. Oh, technical difficulty? Sure. Um, technical difficulty, you're talking about the equilateral triangle question, redoing that one? Let's start it again with a new whiteboard. All right, so we have an equilateral triangle. All right, what we know about equilateral triangles is all sides are equal. All right, and all angles are equal. And they're equal to 60 degrees. So let's start by drawing an equilateral triangle. Okay. One, two, three. Equilateral triangle, we're gonna call them all of length S. They love to ask us about area of equilateral triangles. And a lot of times the SAT and the ACT both ask us about the area of an equilateral triangle. And the only thing they give us is either the side is equal to six or the perimeter is equal to 18. Well, that's, you know, if the sides are the same, you can give me the perimeter or one side, it really doesn't matter, right? We know what that is, right? So if the sides are six, that's great. The only way to find the area of an equilateral triangle is I have to drop a height. So I have to come in here and drop a height, all right? And when I drop that height, Oh, question 21. We had uh, question 21. Absolutely. All right, let me go back to it. All right. So the first thing with question 21 is you have your three equal sides. So you want to label them with a line, AE equal to BE equal to BD, 
right? I'm gonna label EBD at 40, so I put him in there, and I'm gonna label C at 45 degrees, all right? In fact, what I'm gonna do here, um, Leo, if you want me to, I can clean it off and start from scratch. Do you wanna do that? Right. The key to this question is I have two isosceles triangles. ABE is an isosceles triangle because AE is equal to BE. And triangle BED or BDE is an isosceles triangle because BE is equal to BD. Once I know that this angle is 40, since BE is equal to BD, these two angles have to be the same. Square root three, side radical two. Yes, Yash, that'll absolutely work. Because what that has is you have in there the half of the side times radical three will get the height. So that formula incorporates the finding the height and you don't have to go through the steps. That formula uses it. All right, so yes, that absolutely works. Among different students, is there a common misconception that A and E are equal? Angle A and angle E. Um, I would hope that just by looking at angle A and angle E, you could see this is an obtuse angle and this is an acute angle. So I agree with you, we have the two equal sides and we gotta make sure that our angles are opposite the equal sides. So A and this angle up here at B have to be equal, not these guys. But I hope by also just looking at it, I'm like, hang on, this is obtuse and this is acute. It doesn't seem reasonable that this angle and this angle could be equal. But if I'm in a rush and I'm not careful with my equal sides, I could absolutely get it twisted, right? But keep your eyes open and be like, wait, hang on, this is an obtuse angle, this is an acute angle, they really can't be the same, right? So once we have, this is an isosceles triangle. Therefore, these two angles have to be the same. Triangle EBD, EBD. This one here. I, again, I would hope that just by looking at A and looking at E, you can, you can tell by looking at them, they're not the same size. Right, this guy is bigger than this guy. So I would, again, I'd want you to take the time to go through the steps, Vishwa. All right, oh, okay, equal sides, equal angles. I got 40 taken care of, I got 140 left. These have to be 70. Work the math steps. All right, got 180 in the triangle, that that's 40. These have to add to 140, they're 70 each. Therefore, I have supplemental here. 110 and 70, 180 supplemental. Once I get this 110, okay, again, I got an isosceles triangle. I got 180 in the triangle. I got 110 taken care of. I got 70 degrees left that these two angles have to incorporate. And that's the place where the mistake is usually made, Vishwa. Once I get, oh, I got 70 left people forget it has to be broken up among the two angles. So yes, 70 is a common trap answer on this question, All right? Because once you get down to, oh, I got 70 degrees left, people forget to divide it by two. So yes, I'm, I apologize, I didn't quite catch what you had meant initially. But yes, this is a common trap answer because people forget to divide that 70 by two. All right, what other questions do we have? All 
right? I'm going to go back and keep reviewing some formulas because that's always good for us. All right. So again, we did our equilateral triangle, all sides equal. Once you drop the height into this triangle, that's a right angle. This has to be 60 degrees. That has to be 60 degrees. That's a right angle. Therefore, these are 30. I've got a 30, 60, 90 right. This side, if it's 6, is divided up into 3 and 3. And then this height becomes 3 radical 3. And then area, 1 half base times height. 1 half, the whole base is 6. And the height is 3 rad 3. So that gives us 1 half of 6 is 3, so that's 9 radical 3 is the area of this equilateral triangle with a side equal to 6. All right? They love to give us equilateral triangles and ask us to find areas because if I'm not cognizant of the 30, 60, 90 and the height issue, I can get stuck, absolutely can get stuck in there. And yes, that formula works really well, right? Good job on that one. Let's see, what other formulas do we want to... Um, oh, there's one other formula I want to put up while we're here. I want to put a circle on the board. All right, if you have a circle, and let's say we're going to put a center of my circle. A lot of times on the test, they like to ask us, all right, if that's A, B, arc A, B, C. Um, same problem with different examples. You mean different values in the, in the triangles? So hang on, let's put up a blank whiteboard. Let's draw what we have here. We have AB, BE, BD, BC. All right, so let's put some letters on that. A, B, E, D, and C. All right, we're going to keep AE equal to BE equal to BD. But let's go ahead and instead of EBD being 40, let's change it. For, let's make this 25. If EBD is 25, all right, what do I know? This triangle is isosceles triangle. Two equal sides means that these angles have to be equal to each other. I have 180 degrees in the triangle. <laughs> ah, okay. Let's go back and let's take a look at it. Okay. See, I'm not clear, guys. You have to be really explicit so I know exactly what you're asking. Let's go back to the triangle with the three radical three. All right. First, I'm going to answer the question which in terms of what Wander asked in terms of how did I get to three radical three? All right. I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle here. with an angle 60 and an angle 30. This has a length of 3. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the side opposite 30 is x. The side opposite 60 is x rad 3. And the side opposite the, the 90 degree angle or the hypotenuse is double the side opposite 30. Just remember your 30, 60, 90 relationships. 
All right, if this is 60 and 30, this is x, x rad 3, and 2x. Okay, so the 3 radical 3 wander comes from the 30, 60, 90 relationship. All right, um, Vishwa, the, the key here is just change your length on this. So if instead of the side being 6, let's call the side 8. All right, then with an equilateral triangle, 8, 8, drop a height, 4 and 4. All right, this is still 60, this is still 60, this is still 30. The height is now 4 radical 3. All right, the height is always half the side times radical 3 because of the two 30, 60, 90s in there. And then area is once again 1 half the full base times height. 1 half the full base times height. 1 half the full base is 8 times 4 radical 3. So um, 4 times 4 radical 3, so the area here is 16 radical 3. Okay guys, it was a pleasure to talk with you today. Everybody stay safe. Um, take care of yourself and your family. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys in a new session at a different time. All right, everybody have a good day.